welcome to Mentally Stronger, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strengths and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Melly O'Brien, co-founder of mindfulness.com and creator of mindfulness-based mental strength training. I'm so glad to have you with me. Let's dive in to today's episode. Today, I am going to be talking about healthy anger. And the idea of healthy anger might seem a little bit strange to some of you at first. After all, haven't many of us been taught that anger is inherently a toxic emotion, a bad emotion? This is a common misunderstanding about anger. Anger is a healthy and valuable and important human emotion. It's something that we all experience. And like all emotions, it's a messenger. As Audrey Lord stated, you know, anger is loaded with information and energy. However, if anger is not expressed in a healthy way, it can lead to all kinds of regrettable situations. So today I'm going to talk about how we find a healthy expression of anger and really harness its energy and intelligence as a force for good and strength and purpose in your life. So anger, it's our body's natural reaction to when something just isn't right. You know, anger tells us that something we care about is under threat and it's saying do something about this. And then the body starts to mobilize to take action. However, if our response to that anger isn't skillful, if we're not mindful with its expressions, we may unconsciously play out all of that mobilized energy in ways that are not helpful or skillful and then regret it later. We have all been there, right? (laughs) Being mentally strong with our anger means we're finding a way to give healthy expression to that anger. Now, anger can range, right, from a faint annoyance to outright rage. And anger can be expressed in four basic ways. Aggressive, passive-aggressive, suppressive, or assertive. Now, three out of these four types are what I would call unhelpful or unskillful expressions of anger. The aggressive, the passive aggressive, and the suppressive are not helpful, not skillful. However, assertive anger is the healthy expression of anger. Now, most of us will have a consistent pattern of playing out one of these styles predominantly, maybe two. And if you never had healthy anger modeled for you or taught to you, then it's pretty easy to just keep falling into the default uh, or the unhelpful style that you might have. So the goal of mental strength training is to move a person from the unhealthy expressions of anger and any other emotions into healthy ones, helpful ones. This is a difficult task without getting clear on what expressions of unhealthy anger actually look like. How do they display? What are the expressions of them? Once we do that, then you can identify them within yourself and shift them. So let's take a look at the four different types of anger and the way that they express. That way you'll be able to identify how they might be playing out in your own life, how they play out in your relationships, your work and your life in general. And then from there, you can more easily make a shift. So the first form of anger we're going to look at here is aggressive anger. So with aggressive anger, the first thing that tends to happen is that there's a tendency to be direct and forceful in communicating points of view, often in a way that lacks genuine interest in the other side's opinion, thoughts, or needs. Second thing, in conflict, there's often quick, heated responses, and the voice is often raised. Third, other people's feelings are often overlooked in order to just move things forward or find a solution to a problem. Four, 
Aggressive anger, you're very quick to point out the flaws and errors of others, may even use insults and criticisms to do that. Five, the amount of anger can often be out of proportion to the actual event or conversation. In terms of expressing aggressive anger, may throw things, hit things, be verbally abusive or even physically abusive when angry. And the last thing, there's often a lot of blame of others and a lack of taking personal responsibility. Okay, passive-aggressive. Passive-aggressive behaviour is often a pattern of indirectly expressing negative feelings instead of openly addressing them. So here are a couple of points of what this might look like uh, when expressed. First, when angry or frustrated, the person often becomes silent and sullen. Two, says everything's fine when they're actually really, really angry, but then they might sulk or exhibit negative feelings or hostile attitudes towards the other people involved. Three, commonly uses sarcastic, critical or snide comments rather than direct conversation, uh, may put people down, complain or talk about other people behind their back. Tries to get back, this is number four, tries to get back at people in indirect ways without actually telling them why they're upset. So examples of this might be resistance to cooperating, procrastinating on task, or refusing to help out with tasks, knowing that it's going to frustrate the other person. The next thing, there's a deliberate evading of direct conflict and open conversation and instead a tendency towards holding resentment and grudges. And in direct conflict, If you're passive aggressive, there's a tendency to just stare straight ahead and not really engage much, not really express your true feelings or needs. And the last thing, often blames others. Okay, so now we move on to suppressive style. Now we know here that some people express anger by yelling, by hitting things, by snide remarks or talking behind backs, all of these kinds of things. However, some people don't express their anger at all destructively or constructively, and they choose to simply totally suppress it instead. So some signs of the suppressive anger style, when there's an actual conflict, they feel totally paralyzed. Two, tendency not to admit feeling angry at all. So if something happens where someone's done something to upset anger or hurt this person, they won't say anything at all. They won't mention it. When they are angry, they try to portray as if they totally have it all together. So they pretend they're not feeling angry at all. Fourth thing here, when they are resentful or angry, that might happen on the level of thinking, but it will never be spoken or acted out. Next thing, when they're frustrated or angry or upset, they may not stand up for their own needs at all. They will have trouble saying no and asserting healthy boundaries with other people. Sometimes the the term people pleaser can be a term that they might relate to or other people might relate to with um, people who are more on the suppressive style. Now, it might not be so obvious with the suppressive style how the anger can be harmful. People often don't notice because there's no big lashing out and there's no passive aggressive behavior So it might be not so obvious, but suppressing anger can lead to a lot of problems for people. First of all, anger is a physiological response to perceived threat. So your body will actually go into a fight or flight state. In that state, your blood pressure and your heart rate increases, your body releases stress hormones, it gives you a burst of energy to mobilize to take action, right? But frequently suppressing anger can put the body in a prolonged state of stress. You know, when you suppress anger, it doesn't go away. So that can actually lead, there's loads of research on this to uh, all kinds of health issues, including inflammatory conditions, headaches, digestive problems, sleep problems, hypertension. So it's not good for the body. Bottling up anger and ignoring our issues can also lead to mental health challenges such as depression, anxiety, and addiction. And it's also very destructive to Relationships, I would say not only with others, but also our relationship with ourself. You know, according to the American Psychological Association, people who suppress anger have significant problems in relationships because 
Suppression can cause you to lose touch with your own needs, values, and boundaries. And that can really inhibit your ability to be authentic with others and with your own self. Okay, so let's now move on and take a look at healthy anger, otherwise known as assertive anger. Now, these are appropriate, healthy expressions of anger and helpful ways of addressing conflict. So assertive anger looks uh, or sounds a little bit like this. When a person is angry or frustrated, they're open and honest about expressing it, but doing so in a respectful way without being either forceful or meek. The person doesn't insist on being right or getting their own way. They seek to resolve conflicts mutually. Third, they don't make threats, insults, or intimidating remarks, nor do they blame others. They speak directly to the person rather than behind their back or with any kind of indirect hostility or hostile actions, right? The next thing, they accept responsibility for their own mistakes and flaws. So they're willing to listen to opinions of others without becoming defensive upset or angry and they seek to improve and learn and lastly they assert their boundaries as needed so they say yes when they mean it <laughs> they say no when they need to and they'll stay true to their own values and needs at the same time as trying to help others stay true to their own values and needs so in other words they're really authentic okay so hearing all of these aspects of healthy anger, what's coming up for you in this moment? It may sound a little bit unnatural at first to be so open and direct with others because it might mean more difficult or awkward conversations, but rest assured that the end result of healthy anger is stronger interpersonal relationships, better teamwork, greater authenticity and connection to your own values and needs. And anger can also, when it's healthy, serve to keep us focused on our own goals and values and help us to stand up to the things that matter to us and fight injustices and unfairnesses. And it's also, you know, the way that I see it, it's an act of self-love because we can use anger as a signal to tune into that it may be time for us to speak up for ourselves, look after ourselves, give ourselves what we need to stay safe, happy, and strong. So a bit of healthy anger is definitely worth the discomfort. Now, as I said before, most of us just, we haven't had a good model for anger in our lives. So uh, for healthy anger rather in our lives. So how then do we learn to practice it? Well, in short, <laughs> we learn to practice it. You know, like anything in life, the more you practice healthy anger, the easier it becomes. So I'm just going to give you three tips here to start uh, expressing anger in a healthier way, starting right away. So tip number one is just, first of all, if you feel like you might be a person who's more prone towards the suppressed or passive aggressive anger, then I encourage you to just write about when you get angry. It can be really helpful to have a journal just for this topic and keep it close by so that, you know, whenever you have a frustration and irritation, you can write about your anger as it occurs and that will help you get more clarity on it. And that's something that you could do on the go every time you get angry or you could do this at the end of every day as a kind of check-in. Second tip is mindfulness is a really helpful practice for developing emotional intelligence altogether and definitely good for healthy anger. This is across the board for all the different styles of anger because mindfulness is going to help you learn to step back from your emotions and thoughts and it teaches you to become more aware of what triggers you, learn to catch yourself before anger kind of takes you over. And it gives you a little bit of mental space where you can pause before you react and then choose consciously to express your emotions 
in a more constructive way, in a more effective way. Highly recommend learning mindfulness and using it to help you grow healthy anger. And the third tip is to deliberately practice healthy anger as much as you can. So you could keep a checklist for healthy anger expressions close by. There's a link for that, by the way, in the show notes. And try to familiarize yourself with it regularly. And every time you feel an irritation or frustration or anger building, see if you can just put it into practice over and over again until it becomes like second nature to you. And that would, you know, maybe what that looks like is, you know, when you're angry or frustrated, you're, you know, you practice being honest and expressing it in a respectful way. You don't insist on being right. You try to, uh, you know, take on board the other person's feedback. You listen to others' opinions without becoming defensive. So these, all of these behaviors are things you can train in again and again and again until it becomes your default mode. So I invite you to try practicing healthy anger in the week ahead if the opportunity arises. It could be something really small, a minor irritation or something bigger. Just start by just giving it a go. And one final word to wrap this episode up. You know, sometimes we are angry for very valid reasons. Uh, Whereas other times, you know, we might get angry over rather minor things. But regardless of the reason, it is really important to regulate this big, powerful emotion in a healthy way. Now, while yelling and screaming and throwing things isn't the answer, it's also important to learn how to communicate your boundaries and needs really constructively. Now, if you want some extra support in dealing with anger, a mental health professional can really help you work through it, or you might find it helpful to train yourself to become mentally stronger over eight weeks in my mental strength program, Headstrong. You can find out all about that on my website and in the show notes. I hope this episode's been helpful for you. I wish you well with this practice, and I will see you on the next episode of Mentally Stronger. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength. And if you'd like some more support in becoming mentally strong, Come over to the website and check out the different coaching and training options I have on offer there for you. You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. And thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong.